Welcome back guys. So I wanted to talk about an article from the August 1964 issue of the Strength and Health magazine. The title of the article is Analysis of Championship Lifting by Dr. Dave Webster. Webster was the Scottish national coach for the Weightlifting Federation. He founded the International Highland Games Federation and is very involved in strongman. He helps out with the world's strongest man as one of the judges. He helps out at the Arnold Classic. Uh, and I wanted to roll a clip of the first time I had ever heard of Webster's name. And he's moved his hands in yet again. Arms down! David Webster Arms stopped him. Down! You bend your arms in the middle. Bill doesn't like it. You bend them further. You made a big mistake, Webster! Bill. I'm a real big one. This article is analyzing the technique of Polinski, who was a Polish weightlifter. He was actually the first Polish lifter to win an Olympic gold medal, and this is analyzing his 190 kilogram clean and jerk, performed in split style clean and, of course, a split jerk. And it's split up into nine different figures, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about each figure. The first figure Webster notes that that Polinski's back is flat as he's pulling the bar from the floor to his knees and in figure number two his shoulders are over or a little bit ahead of the barbell and at this point Polinski has almost completely straightened his knees and going from figure two to figure three he you can't actually see it at this point but Webster noted that there was a reflexive action that happened with his knees that caused his knees to go from being straight to re-bent. And he refers to this as what we know as the double knee bend and notes that this is not an action that is cultivated deliberately. And we now know that that is uh, caused by the stretch reflex of the hamstrings being straightened from straightening the knees. And so on figure three, Polinski is at the height of the pull. His body is completely extended and he's nice and vertical. And the arms are still straight. And then on figure four is when Polinski begins pulling under the barbell. And this is when the arms come into play. Webster notes the, the great arm action that Polinski used to pull himself under the bar. And on figure five, Polinski receives the bar to his shoulders in a nice comfortable split. And Webster notes that, that Polinski's back leg, his back foot, strikes a little bit before his front foot does. And that it actually travels a whole lot further. Now this is something that I, I've, I've heard talked about a lot recently, whether the back foot or the front foot strikes first in a jerk. And... I'm going to record a video sometime in the near future sharing my thoughts on it, but just note that Webster did did write about the fact that Polinski's back foot struck before his front foot did. Figure 6 and figure 7 are showing Polinski dipping for the jerk, and Webster noted that Polinski had a short controlled dip uh, before he drove the bar up for the jerk, rather than a a long dip or rather than a quick dip and this is to enable Polinski to utilize the oscillatory or utilize the whip on the bar going from a dip to to the drive for the jerk the trick to the jerk isn't how quickly an athlete can dip and it isn't just how hard or how high the athlete can drive the bar up the trick to the jerk is how quickly the athlete can go from from dipping to driving, how quickly they can minimize that transition going from the dip to the drive. This will enable the athlete to utilize that whip to their advantage, to, to drive the bar up when the bar is already whipping up. And figure eight shows Polinski driving up his body again. He's completely extended to drive the bar up before he initiates uh, jumping the feet out into the split. And figure nine shows a, a textbook split position. Polinski's hips and shoulders are directly underneath the bar. His feet are out. His front shin is nice and vertical. His back leg is uh, just, his knee is slightly bent on his back leg, nice and relaxed, but very solid and very stable. And he had a, 
an easy recovery with a jerk, made it look like clockwork. I wanted to talk about this article because I was pretty fascinated with all the technical points that Dave Webster makes back in 64. I don't really hear anything different than what's taught today in terms of technique and I think that some lifters and some coaches may try to dismiss an older coach or an older lifter um, and the way that they teach is old school but honestly I don't see that so much has changed. Um, maybe there it's a good selling point to say that you've reinvented the wheel and discovered some new way of lifting but um, just from what I've read I'm I just think they're teaching technique back in the 60s just about the way that they're, they're teaching it now um, but yeah if you guys have any any questions any suggestions um, you want me to cover or elaborate on anything that I talked about in this video please let me know and I would be happy to type up a response um, talk a little bit more about which foot lands in the jerk I already plan on doing that or if you want me to talk about the dip and the drive on the jerk I'd be more than happy to do that um, yeah, so thank you for watching and there will be more to come.